It has been two days shooting with the Canon R5 Mark II in real estate. And for me, a lot of the questions that I'm getting from you is, Jared, where do I find Canon C-Log 2? Well, this is where you find it. So in the camera menu, we are gonna be going four over and then to the custom picture, we're gonna select on and then we're going to go to cp file and select c log 2 baby and now you can thank me by subscribing Hi, I'm Jared Hoyman and welcome back to the channel where, yes, I've got a lover here. It is the Canon R5 Mark II. Next to my other lover, we kind of have a menage a trois of electronics over here. This is the R6 II. The R7 is watching us. We like to have people watch or objects like a camera watch us. Oh, and by the way, what did you think of that mega mansion? That is a 13,000 square foot house can't even call it a house. It's a mansion built in 1920 on Brayborn Street in Alloway, Wisconsin, which is attached to Green Bay. It's just like a mini little town off of Green Bay, uh, about a mile down from my house. It's a historic home here. Ballroom on the third floor. And yes, I did shoot it all. I did the entire property. This was just the exterior reshoot. I did it back in the early spring and they wanted some touch-up, so I did some video today with it using this beauty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to this guy. He had to watch. But yes, the R5 II and C-Log II gives you those most dynamic shots now. The blue skies are blue. Um, just getting those colors in DaVinci Resolve. Now, real estate photo, that'll be another conversation for another time because... This thing is pretty good for that as well. Is it overkill for photo in real estate? Yes, it is totally. But if you need it for video as well, now you've got the ultimate hybrid and that is where the R5 II comes in. The R6 II is amazing for real estate photography. Video though, the C-Log II does dominate over the R6 II in that. We will have some versus videos in the future too. So if you are new to the channel, you might wanna subscribe because it's gonna be awesome. Oh, and I have ADD. So back to that Brayborn mansion that I just showed you in the beginning of this video. I have a ton of footage on it and I've been wanting to do a documentary and it's not gonna be very long, maybe 10 to 20 minutes about that mansion, a walkthrough on it. Um, I did the research, went to the library, the history of that mansion and how it was built. And originally it was on 15 acres and now there's a lot of houses in that area, but a cast iron fence surrounded the 15 acres. It has a hundred foot tunnel to the carriage house. It is incredible. We need to do a documentary. So leave a comment below if you want me to talk about that and do a little mini documentary. I can't promise it's going to be beautiful. I'll just have my beautiful voice in the background. That's about it. But today I wanted to talk about C-Log 2 a little bit more from the last video that I did because now I had more hands-on experience. And I got to tell you, I don't even know why there's C-Log 3 in there because you shouldn't use it. You should just use C-Log 2. Now, I did dabble with 8K RAW and 4K RAW. Wow, let me tell you, the latitude that you can get with RAW is awesome. And so is the file size. I think I did about, I'm, I'm probably exaggerating a little bit, but uh, it, honestly, it was probably like 15 seconds, 20 seconds, and it was like nine gigs. Now, I will say you probably don't need to do RAW, but really, if the lighting is harsh, you don't know the white balance correctly, well then maybe, because you can change ISO and white balance in post, and it's it's so forgiving. But if you can dial it in pretty good, the C-Log 2 is amazing. But again, I'm gonna do another video talking about RAW, comparing RAW to C-Log 2 and RAW 4K to RAW 8K. 8K 
is absolutely gorgeous. I didn't think I would like it or if it would really matter, but man, you can punch in, crop in, and maintain an awesome 4K image. Now, you may have been following me for a while and that's why you're tuning in, but some of you might be tuning in because you just picked up an R5 II or you're considering to pick up an R5 II and you wanna know what the last two days of my experience have been. Well, as a real estate photographer, um, I average about four to five houses a day and that's pretty much what I've averaged the last two days. Yesterday, or the day before, was probably the scariest day because all my settings were not intact. And so I was kind of on the run and gun before I did my custom C1. And once I did that, it was like shooting the R6 Mark II all over again, except when I brought it over onto my computer in Lightroom, the files read just fine, the photos look good, but if you just look at it in its raw format, it looks really bad and it makes you think that something happened with the camera. It didn't. Uh, it It's just not uh, that Kodak or that um, raw file is not recognized by Mac right now and maybe not by PC. So it does look kind of wonky. The colors are way off. It almost looks like a negative. But eventually the software with the Mac and the software with the PC do catch up and you're gonna be able to look at those raw files just fine and they're not gonna look wonky. But if you bring it right into Lightroom or whatever photo editing software you use, it'll look just fine. It just can catch you off guard, especially if you're like me and you use Adobe DNG Converter the preview or the thumbnail looks horrible. It looks like you just screwed it up, but once you open it, go into um, uh, Photoshop or into Lightroom, it looks just fine. Now, these are my impressions and my first kind of, uh, you know, whoa, after using it for a few days. Um, this screen is a lot bigger than the R6 Mark II, and it took a little bit getting used to, but it makes me wonder, Will I ever use my Atomos Ninja? Well, I did today, just to record my screen so I could show you guys exactly how to get into that menu. And honestly, that's all I use my Ninja for because everything could be recorded right here. You got 8K raw, 60 frames per second. By the way, you need a fast card to do the 60 frames per second in raw and 8K. My card um, is pretty phenomenal. It's a Lexar, it's a two terabyte, and there's good deals on it. It is 1,900 megabits per second. You need faster. Um, I believe that you need over 3,000 in order to do the 8K60 RAW. Um, and even 8K60, I believe you need faster than this because um, the RAW wouldn't let me. Um, I believe I can get into the 8K60 with this. But uh, that being said, that kind of data bitrate going across the Ninja doesn't even handle that. So this is pretty good. When I went to connect my Ninja, I was like, holy cow, I actually have to go get a full HDMI to put in there and not the micro. I was so sad, said no one. Now here is the battery. This is the LPE6P. It is the only one that will make your video functions work properly for what you need in there. Uh, can you take photos? Yes, you can take photos just fine. Here's the thing, you're gonna think that by buying this battery, you are gonna have an awesome life expectancy for battery on here. And that is actually not the case. So with my R6 Mark II, the regular LP battery, I can go a full day shooting five houses and maybe two of those houses are video walkthroughs along with photos and the rest are just photos. And I can do that all in one battery and have most of my battery alive. Uh, lately, I've been barely getting through with this, but you can hear the vent system definitely running all the time on here. And if you're familiar with the R6 Mark II, you can hear kind of that noise in the background too, where that's venting a little bit. Uh, this is probably at least double that sound. So it is pretty audible, and so it's always running. And that's why I think this is draining. So I highly recommend picking up a spare one. I'm actually gonna probably get another one too. So I'll have three, maybe four, I'll just make it even. Um, and then I also do have this from KNF Concept. Awesome, awesome V-mount battery. Uh, has USB-C and USB-A. And I actually use this uh, connected directly to my camera to charge my battery through the USB onto the R5 too. 
And this was fully charged and I charged this and I still had like 75, 80% battery left on this. So you could be charging this battery multiple times. You probably can get away with it almost a week of just having this. So if you have this fully charged, put it in your car, put it in your bag, and then on the go, you're like, well, I better charge it. I have found, and it could be just me, I'm still playing around with it, that charging USB-C on here is faster than the um, AC adapter that you get. And I don't know why, but it seems to be charging a lot faster. I've been charging it through my car as well through the cigarette lighter um, adapter. So that's been working. Now, if you were gonna compare the bodies on these two, now obviously my R6 II has the 24 to 70 on it, and then the 14 to 35 F4, which is a lot lighter on the R5 II. Um, but if you were to compare the bodies, um, they're very similar, except for the R5 II is just a little bit thicker. And that is because of their vent system right here. So you have the vent underneath, and then you have a vent right by um, the little USB-C and the HDMI ports right there. Um, otherwise, the layout and everything is very, very similar to the R6 II, except you get the LED screen, which is, which is nice. Um, and uh, there's just, I don't know. It, it feels familiar, but the menu system has changed in a lot of ways. And that's why I think for a lot of people, the C-Log 2 menu part, finding that, it actually, embarrassingly, took me like over an hour to find it. I didn't ask for help. I'm a guy. We don't ask for help. We just kind of do it. Except for the people that asked me, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let you struggle. I'm going to tell you how to get there. And so that's why I did that first part of the video. So you could figure it out right away and start playing with C-Log2 because it is game changing. Now, just like the R7, the R3, the R6 Mark II, uh, we do have the digital, this is difficult by the way, this little case, this little cover on here to open this, it is like, to do it with like one hand almost um, is, is a pain. There, I did it. I broke a nail, but I did it. Um, the digital hot shoe is nice, and I am a big fan of the Tascam XLR 2D. And so I'm gonna be doing a revamped new video showing how to work with that specifically on the R5 Mark II. Because if you're gonna be using this for any kind of video or interview style, the, the Tascam XLR 2D is probably one of the best accessories you can get. And so in the next week, I'm gonna be doing a video on that and kind of describing how to use it um, on here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this. I hope that they create a little substitute or a third party that we can use. It is weather sealed, so it is nice that it protects the um, digital hot shoe, but there's got to be a better way to get these on here. Now, although I did tell you that C-Log 3 is not needed, I am going to do a comparison showing C-Log 3 versus C-Log 2 just so I can prove it, and then verse it with C-Log 3 and C-Log 3 with R6 II and R5 II and just see if there's a big difference there. Now I'll be getting into the photography end of things because that's what I am, a hybrid shooter. So a videographer and a photographer because when you go to real estate shoots, you gotta do both. And so I'm gonna show you how to do this with some real estate photography and also, man, that eye retina autofocus is not a gimmick, it is the real thing. I appreciate you guys stopping by. I hope you're just as excited as I am about the R5 II. Even if you don't have it, you can live vicariously through me. It's a real thing. And again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and don't forget to watch these videos. I know you didn't watch them all. Just watch it. You'll like it.